Hi guys, it is a gloomy night here in Austin, Texas here in the collapse of global industrial civilization as we wait for a 30-foot wall of water to come washing my house away, but we're not going to hang in Austin. We're going to head over to Tokyo, Japan tonight where I have managed to chase down our old friend Peter Wadhams, climatologist Peter Wadhams, and Peter's got a busy day, so I'm going to just move through the introductions. We all know who Peter Wadhams is, and if you don't, you can you, you can figure out elsewhere. So Peter is over in Japan, um, globe trotting, and he has been to a, a a conference that he wants to talk to us about that he thinks we should know about that that ties in to this recent IPCC report and whatnot. So Peter Wadhams, just come on and, and pretty much just have a run with it. Uh, just get just let us know what we what we need to know tonight. Okay, uh, thanks very much. Well, the the conference was called. Uh, uh, Innovation for a Cool Earth Forum. It's been uh, an annual conference in Japan for the last four years. That, that it was initiated actually by the Prime Minister, and it's it's really concerned a lot with with business and the way in which uh, we need to adapt or mitigate global warming and and how we we need to switch to renewable energy. How best to do this? There was the the chairman of Toyota coming came along and talked about uh, uh, switching to hydrogen fueled cars and so on. A lot of very interesting stuff. But one of the talks was by Thelma Krug, who's the vice chairman of uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And she was giving a, a resume of, of this 1.5 degree C report, which had just come out. Uh, and that report has, seems to have raised uh, a variety of views in the way it's been reported. There, there were uh, a, most most mainstream newspapers and, and media have said, well, it's a it's a call to arms. It's it's a rousing call to say we if we want to keep warming below 1.5 or even two, then we have to be much more urgent in our response than than uh, previously thought. In fact, that's previously... But back, back to our faster the, than previously thought we talked about it. Yes, yeah, so this is our latest version of that. Okay, so she was not happy with the report, it doesn't sound like. Well, well she, she helped write it, and she was very uh, pleased with it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, she, I'm, I'm, but some of the she said that the report recommends were things that, that I... Raise, raise warning flags about, and and some of the, the not mainstream newspapers, but mm -hmm. uh, climate climate change scientists have raised uh, warnings about. So perhaps I can share a few of those. Um, the, the the main thing she said, which was was which everybody would agree with, uh, I guess, is that. Uh, We've already experienced one degree of warming since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Um, it's not impossible to to restrain warming to 1.5, but it says she says it's not impossible, but will require unprecedented changes in society, uh, which you know you can kind of say that again because it's you're, you're we're up at one degree. If we don't add any more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, we will go beyond 1.5 because uh, there's a of the catch-up effect. And um, so, to say that it's we can keep warming below 1.5, I think is is being very optimistic. Um, I think we're stuck with 1.5, whatever we do. But she says we're not. Um, and of course, she says that the 1.5 has many benefits relative to two degrees in the sense that every bit of warming matters. So if we can keep the warming below 1.5, we'll get a whole range of, of effects on our climate and, and our food production and so on that are much less harsh than if we allow warming to reach two degrees. Yeah, I think yeah, we're we're familiar with 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 the with the company line. So was she touting the company line or was she coloring out of the lines a little bit. Uh, well, she was telling the company line, really. 
Um, and what it went, she went on to talk about was um, that we can achieve 1.5 only if we get to zero net emissions by 2050. So we explored that. Uh, there were various questions, and I asked a couple of them. Um, how on earth do you get to zero net emissions by 2050? Because zero net emissions mean you're not emitting any carbon dioxide at all. Yeah. And now, if you're unless you're going to insert a, a way of taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, then uh, the only way to achieve zero emissions is to to not burn any more fossil fuel, uh, and not at all. Uh, and I can't see the world doing that. Um, the, the, the human nature is such that we want to save the world. We don't want to, to all be uh, consumed in a, in, a, in a terrible catastrophe. But we don't actually want to do anything that will make us uncomfortable in, in doing it. We still want to drive our cars, although maybe we can think about driving smaller ones. Uh, we, still want, we still want our way of life as it is now. Uh, but kind of slimmed down a bit and cleaned up a bit. Uh, but that's not going to work, um, and basically. And it certainly won't even work to keep warming below 2 degrees. But in, uh, in the, the 1.5 report, she says, well, at um, 20, by 2050, we have to have zero emissions. So the response to that immediately is, well, you can only achieve that if you add on uh, very serious efforts to take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, direct air capture. Uh, but what she says is that um, because of um, increase in, in renewable energy use and um, reduction in, in fossil fuels, that there will be, that it is possible to achieve zero net emissions without uh, Air capture or without? Oh, without any. any. Now, now, uh, uh, did did you? How did you react to that? I mean, did did you manage to keep your mouth shut, or did you just start slamming your fist on the table? Uh, well, no, I, I said, how on earth do you achieve that? So she said, well, uh, there will be some overshoot. There will be something <laughs> where they haven't been able to to get rid of. The, the emissions, one of which is Chinese coal. I mean, the Chinese are not going to give up on coal production. So there'll be Chinese coal. So and so she said there will be let-out clauses for a few vital uh, interests that can't be stopped completely. Now, I mean, to have a let-out clause if you're a bureaucrat is fine, but we're not talking about bureaucracy now. We're talking about the world. And uh, if you have a let-out clause, that means you have to find some other way to yeah. get rid of that carbon dioxide. So she admitted that we have to allow for a certain amount of carbon dioxide removal by uh, de de devising methods that will do it, like direct air capture. So she admitted that there has to be direct air capture, but only to handle the overshoot due to the fact that the world is not going to actually stop emitting carbon dioxide. In fact, I don't believe they're even going to reduce their emissions of carbon dioxide given the present trends. Uh, but she was very firm in saying that the report specifically excluded um, the use of geoengineering methods. Uh, that's uh, um, radiation uh, reduction by... Uh, looking at uh, by using aerosols or marine cloud brightening, all of these geoengineering methods, because she said that the danger, the unknown dangers of using geoengineering are that we might be inadvertently doing something serious to the climate by uh, applying geoengineering, and therefore, uh, because of these unknown dangers, uh, it's better not to do it. Of course, that, that avoids mentioning the, 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 unknown, the known dangers of, of um, catast catastrophic dangers of not doing anything at all and as if as if geoengineering involves a certain amount of risk mm -hmm. so you can do it. it it's a bit like uh, if somebody's got some fatal disease and you give them a, a drug that might have some side effects and make them feel sick or something it's you don't it, it's it's a crazy uh, approach uh, and she, and i talked to her afterwards and she was very 
confirm that IPCC has said no geoengineering, oh, really? um, but direct air capture is allowed uh, if we don't get rid of all of our uh, emissions by 2050. So you you do you believe that? So do you, does it sound like the the IPCC and by by proxy the United Nations are not going to be pushing a solar radiation management agenda over the next few years? Well, that's what she said. Do you uh, believe that, it? That's what it is said in this report. That um, that insofar as something else be needed uh, to to stay within one point five degrees of warming. That something um, would be direct air capture, um, but huh. only to, to cover the, the the remaining carbon emissions that will still be going on in 2050, which they optimistically think will be pretty low, but which I personally think will be as great or greater than the carbon emissions now, given all the current trends. You will give us your well, well. That is an interesting piece of news. I, I have to admit, I've got some egg on my face, Peter, because I've been saying for years uh, that there was no way they were not going to be pushing it, and uh, so I, I, I guess I have a little bit of egg on my face now. Imagine that. Uh, give us your since since I, since I know you've got a lot on your plate. Give us the Peter Wadhams five minute uh, summation of your opinion of of the new IPCC report. Uh, is it a blueprint to save global industrial civilization from climate catastrophe or is it not? Um, well, I think it's not. Um, I was going to mention one other thing that they, there's a few glaring well, quite a few glaring um, omissions, and the, the two that, that most men, mostly concern me is the, the failure to address the possibility of of um, new of surprise effects occurring or, or new um, feedbacks taking place. They ignore a lot of old feedbacks. They ignore the the, the methane feedback and the possibility of of greatly increased methane emissions from the offshore. They ignore changes in the thermohaline circulation. Change, that's the changes in ocean circulation due to warming of the ocean, yeah. which are, in fact, already responsible for intensification of hurricanes. Um, so these are ignored and, and just not considered at all. What they say in the report is, we don't want to consider these new uh, feedbacks because if we can keep, it's a circular argument, if we can keep global warming below 1.5, then these extra things won't come in. They won't happen anyway, so we don't have to think about them. So there um, is there so, no mention of meth, uh, of methane anywhere in this report? I mean, it's, it's clear for anyone with, with eyes that we already have methane releases in the thawing permafrost. Or, or right, right now, today, are, are they completely just burying their head in the sand on this whole uh, methane uh, question? No, they are. In fact, they're not really even mentioning methane. They're, they're talking about CO2, and insofar as methane is considered, um, it's, 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 you add a few percent to, to the CO2 effect and in, to incorporate the additional effects of other greenhouse gases. But they don't consider methane by itself as a potentially potent extra force if, if, if the new... Uh, mechanisms come in to, to give a big release. That's that's not considered. That's left aside because if we keep warming to 1.5, it won't happen. Nasty things won't happen. <laughs> um, uh, it's 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 as a the positive thing about it, I suppose, is that it, it says very clearly that we need to take much more urgent action than we have been doing, and. Uh, but then when it gets down to what that action should be, it's the same, it's just more of the same old stuff. Yeah, I'm more of the same old, same old. Mm. It, it's saying, well, well, we just do what we were going to do anyway, um, which is reduce, uh, keep reducing our emissions, putting in more, more um, clean energy and, and so on. Um, but we just do it faster. Um, <laughs> there's nothing like saying, well, at this point, uh, for, for something this urgent, 
we will need a complete change in the way we all live. Um, they would, they really don't want to kind of frighten the horses. Uh, so, at the beginning of the report, they say this, this is, or it, it says it will require unprecedented changes in society. But then throughout the report, they never talk about any unprecedented changes in society. <laughs> they sort of imply you don't need them; you just need to be, be uh, uh, work harder than you were working before at at reducing your emissions. So I, I don't hear, but that, I, I wanted to get your point since we're fifteen and a half minutes, and I and I need to let you go here in three and a half minutes. Uh, I don't know if you saw this this very brief story in Bloomberg uh, a few days ago quoting the president of the next round of key climate negotiations. This is this Michael Kurtyka, K-U-R-T-Y-K-A. Did you read this in Bloom Bloomberg, what he said to, uh, to this Bloomberg reporter? Quote, I am an optimist. I don't have a feeling that there is a major problem. Uh, I read that, and, and all I could do was a sick, ironic laugh. I, I mean, that just tells me everything I need to hear, that this is the new climate chief of, the new, of these new negotiations in Poland starting in December. I don't have a feeling that there's a major problem here. Uh, oh, you know, what are we supposed to do when we read that? Well, I haven't seen that, and uh, I'm, I'm planning to be going to, to Poland, and uh, uh, so I'll be able to find out what's going on. But but uh, if he's if he's now in charge of, of the next round of IPCC, then we just can expect more complacency rather than than the, the push that we, we actually need to, to to make the major efforts. We because you need to make major efforts that change everything now and. Uh, when we've already got in America pushing back on, um, going backwards in time with Trump, and in other countries there's there's a lack of oomph um, and pressure to do anything, that pressure is, is absolutely vital. There has to be urgent pressure, and yet there isn't any, and, and the IPCC report doesn't have any, um, really. It, it just says, let's, let's work harder, but not work hard at anything that will make us uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this Kurtaika guy either directly or, or he's somewhat involved with the decision just a few days ago. Uh, it, it, I, I know it was the Polish uh, Environmental Department that gave the uh, U.S. Army permission to bulldoze a big swath of this protected forest. Uh, to to make an act to to increase the size of a U.S. Uh, Air Force military base in Poland. This is the this is who they get to lead the uh, the next round of, of, of climate negotiations in December, and, and I just it, it's just you know if you don't have a sick twisted sense of humor, Peter, and, and it sounds like you are holding on to your sense of humor, are you? I'm trying to, yes. It's, uh, it's getting very hard. Uh, but uh, it's certainly that, and two, just two things that, that I saw just two days ago um, that the uh, oil production has reached 100, it's 100 yeah. million or 100 billion barrels a, a, a year for the first time ever. Yeah. So oil production is coming up uh, despite the fact that everything's supposed to be coming down. And the the, uh, the mix of cars produced by General Motors is now up to 80% SUVs with gas guzzlers um, because they make more money on SUVs. And yet they're supposed to be producing electric cars for the world. In fact, they produce a few electric cars which they send to China. Yeah. But for most humans, they're producing purely SUVs and trucks, which are ga gasoline more and more gas than, than, than ever before. So there's a lot of cause, there's very little cause for, for optimism in, in what's going on in the world at the moment. And uh, um, one that hoped the IPCC 1.5 might be a clarion call, but it, it wasn't really. Okay. Well, Peter Williams, we're, we're going to let you go. You promised us 20 minutes and you came through with your word. So you are going to be heading to, uh, to Poland for sure. 
Uh, yes, I'm, I'm down to go. Um, it, it's a, it's, I, I'm here in, in, in Tokyo until uh, early uh, November, and then um, I'm also going to be going to uh, Scripps in uh, La Jolla. So I've got to try and fit it in somehow, but uh, I'm, I'm supposed to go. <laughs> well, I hope that we'll be able to track you down for another 15 minutes at some point to get your uh, to get a first-hand on-the-ground report uh, from Peter Wadhams in, in, in Poland to see if your sense of humor is still intact. <laughs> okay, then. Well, can, if I can push, uh, uh, my, advertise myself, uh, I did see yesterday that well, there was a, an article in the New Yorker uh, about uh, climate change and how it's not faced up to by either scientists or people, and, and how it should be uh, how it should be described and, and how we should be made to regard it as very urgent. And Are you should, talking the New Yorker article or the New York Magazine article by David Wallace Wells? No, this is New York, and it's by a lady called Colbert. Oh, and it's the October the seventeenth, I think. Okay, I have not. I have not. Have you read the article of that new article by David Wallace Wells in New York Magazine? Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen that one. Oh, really? Well, I, I'm going to send you the link. It it it'll take you about twelve minutes to read it. I I personally think it is the number one most spot he's the guy who wrote that article about a year ago that stirred up all of that controversy uh anyway i will send you the link and really encourage you to read this new article by david wallace wells because i personally think it is the number one best assessment of that ipcc report so uh you'll get that in a few minutes but peter Wadhams, we do we really do appreciate uh, you stopping by for a few minutes here at Collapse Chronicles, and once again, we very much appreciate everything that you're doing, and and keep up the good fight, and we will talk to you probably in December. Okay, well, it's a pleasure, pleasure to be with you. All right, we'll see you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.